Hey guys, welcome back to Rental Rehab. In the last video, we worked on restoring a shed that had some damaged insulation lining, some broken lighting, and I showed you a couple of different products that I used to paint the shed. We won't be doing a second coat in this video, we'll probably save that for another time, just because weather is not ideal and we have some other big projects to tackle. In this video, we're going to continue restoring the shed, and to do that we're going to replace the spotlights that are mounted on the apex of the shed. After that, we're going to have a crack at replacing some 20-year-old garden beds that are out in the front yard. Let's get into it. The insulation's pretty much rotted away, and I had to use an angle grinder to cut the bolts because they were so rusted. And here's the old versus new. Then I removed the old junction box and the cracked conduit from the mains cable. I'm not going to show too much of the electrical process because if you don't know what you're doing you can get seriously injured. I have my restricted electrical license so I'm qualified to replace those lights and I'm confident that the circuit is fully isolated. Anyway, so I used some 8mm bolts with some nylocks and mounted those lights underneath the J-pole. On hindsight, I probably could have painted that pole, but never mind. The new 30 watt lights came with plugs on the end, so I cut those off, stripped them back, and used blue points to connect them to the main cable. That was housed inside the only weatherproof box I had. I know it's got a switch on it. The switch is not used, it's just weatherproof. And then I can use some cable ties to fasten it to the J-pole. And just a quick look, it's not quite dark yet, but you can already see how bright it's gonna be. Sweet, so now we've taken care of that light, we can move on to the front garden. With this place being a rental for the last couple of years, it's really, really fallen away in terms of maintenance, and you can see here the lawns are pretty much back to dirt. Um, the trees in the centre of the front yard there have never been trimmed in that time. They've been dropping all their produce and fruit everywhere, and the garden beds are really falling apart. And I guess the main part of this project is going to be replacing those garden beds. The neighbour who's lived there for 30 years told me those gardens were done about 20 years ago, so considering that they're actually not in terrible condition, but in my opinion they're definitely an eyesore, and I think even with my limited skill level I could probably make something that looks a bit better. Some of these rounds were pretty hard to get out, particularly the ones that were around the bottom of the dirt. I had to dig away in a couple areas and use a bit of brute force to get them out of the ground. The other part that was hard was getting these retaining rounds out. Some of them were pretty stubborn and the best way I found was just to use a sledgehammer to loosen the dirt around them. Eventually I got them all and we just gave those rounds away for free. They probably ended up as firewood somewhere or who knows, maybe they live on as garden beds in someone else's house. Then we went to Bunnings and man, I love Bunnings, my favourite store. I'm picking out some sleepers that are going to make up the sides of the garden bed. Have a look down the sleepers, make sure they're nice and straight, and if they're bowed or crooked, put them back, grab another one, there's always heaps there. The other parts that we need are the stakes that lock it all together, so there's centre pieces and corner pieces, and you'll need the right number of those. Now, we did a lot of digging by hand, and we had also made a decision that we are going to try to re-level the driveway. And because we're going to re-level the driveway, we figured what we'd do is put an edge against the driveway where the grass starts. We also decided to dig from behind the fence up against the grass, if you know what I mean, and put an edge in next to the grass there. So to help with that, we hired a bobcat and that was delivered just after we'd been to Bunnings. Now, luckily my brother Jace drives a bogger underground, so he's pretty handy with a bucket. This bobcat, even though it costs, I think it was about $200 for a couple of days over the weekend, 
even though it costs a little bit of money, it just saves us so much time. And I think sometimes with projects that are a little bit bigger, it's worthwhile spending that extra dollar just to make the job easier on yourself. And I mean, it speaks for itself. The advantage of that bucket is it leaves a really, really nice flat surface, which is perfect for laying new road base. And that means that we can get a much flatter finish than we could have by doing it with hand tools. The other part that we needed to dig really bad was that central garden bed and we had to decrease the size of the garden bed to a size that would match our sleepers which were 1.8 meters long so that would make the total size 3.6 by 3.6 meters. Now the bobcat did a pretty good job at cutting the garden bed back but the only thing it couldn't do was get through the roots of those palm trees so we resorted to using a combination of spades and hand saws to cut through those roots. Right, finally now that the digging's out of the way, we can get on to making the garden bed. I've drawn a picture here and it pretty much shows exactly how the layout is done. You'll notice that there's a butt joint between the sleepers at every corner. And this allows you to screw into both of the sleepers and lock it really tight into that corner, which I'll show you later on. Just eyeball up what you think is as straight as possible and just stand those stakes in the ground. We use a sledgehammer just to drive them in a little bit so they're steady. And then we use a tape measure and measured off between all the corners diagonally and just making sure that even across the centers that it was the right measurement. So even after all the figuring and eyeballing and measuring and stuff, eventually you've just got to go for it. What we did was drive one of those corner stakes in pretty much the whole way and use that as a starting point to start shifting our timbers around the garden bed. Again, try to get it as straight as possible and it definitely helps having two people here. It's a second pair of eyes to figure out which of you is straighter and also it helps drive in, in those stakes. Make sure that you drive them in really straight by carefully holding onto them. The other thing I'd say is just drive them slowly with that sledgehammer. You can sort of bend over the tops and you know, they're just made out of aluminium, so they're not the strongest product. We have a friend who's an arborist by trade, and he showed up to give us a hand trimming those palm trees. So while he was cutting down those trees, we couldn't really be working under him, so we turned our attention to the back. Jace is using the bobcat here to dig back the surface that was on this rear driveway. Just like the front, we're going to be putting down some new road base and trying to get it a little more level. When the arborist was finished in the front yard, he moved his EWP around to the back. Luckily we have rear access, sort of like a laneway that goes in behind our section, so he was able to park there and then spin his platform out over the fence and he could cut that tree in that back corner. Right, so let's get back to the garden beds. What you want to do now is use a drill to make a hole in those L brackets. And these are for these big hardwood screws that are going to screw the sleepers together. After that, use a smaller drill bit just to give it a pre-drill, which will help guide that hardwood screw. And then you can use a combination of either an impact driver, or in my case, I used an electric drill to drive those screws in. Again, here's a little picture just to show where I put those screws. And this is pretty much how it looks in the end. We never really got it perfect, but it's just a garden bed, so no worries. We moved on to edging the driveway and the lawn behind the fence and for some of these we had to cut the pieces and we just used a circular saw. There was a lot of digging that had to go on behind the fence to get those sleepers in nice and level but it was pretty simple in the end. Luckily for us we had some professional guys come in and build that front fence there so we pretty much just used that as our guide for getting those sleepers straight. We didn't use a string line or anything so I know there's some professional builders out there on YouTube that are just going to rip me up, but that's fine. And if you've got some comments to help me out, that'd be cool. I'm really happy to learn. Once we'd finished screwing all the lumber together, a big cleanup happened, so thanks to David and Taylor for giving us a hand with that. Then we used an orbital sander just to smooth over that rough timber. 
it is pretty rough stuff. It's never really straight these sleepers, so we just did our best to tidy it up. We bought the cheapest decking oil that we could find. I think it was about $67 or something like that. And it's just a way of making those sleepers look like they're better wood than they actually are. And also it gives it a little bit of protection and hopefully will make the garden beds last a lot longer. With the garden beds and edging finished on the driveways, we went and ordered some material to put down on the driveways and also got a trailer full of black mulch. That black mulch looked really, really good. The road base we chose was 25 millimeter road base and it was delivered by a tipper truck. I think by memory we got four tons that were split between the front and back. The Bobcat did the bulk of spreading that road base and lastly we just went over the rake to tidy up any of the parts that it couldn't really get to. So then we used some of that road base we had dug up off the driveway at the front to fill in the garden beds. I put some weed mat down, just hopefully to stop any weeds or anything growing back through from the old garden stuff. And then I used that black bark to cover over the garden. Here's a little tip. Just put a piece of cardboard or anything like that, even a sheet down below the trailer, and that'll stop you spilling all the stuff when you're loading. The last of that black mulch we used to fill in the gap between the fence and the new edge we put on the lawn. Next time we're going to have to put some topsoil down to fill in that lawn all the way up to the edge and also to help us grow some grass back. And here's a final look at how those garden beds turned out. In my opinion, a huge improvement over the garden beds that were there and that edging on the driveway and the lawn just makes it look a lot more planned and a lot less run down. Thanks for watching this video, hopefully you picked up some tips. Let me know what you thought about it in the comments section below. Cheers for watching, see you next time. Jess just said, how's it going? How's it going? Terrible. <laughs> there goes the bricks. <laughs> oh, shit.